Hi, and welcome to the Quote Boxes After Effects template customization video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to replace your text, replace your images, your logo, and also show you a few of the master controls for the quote boxes and show you the timing controls with layer markers uh, to control the timing of the animation of the quote boxes. So let's get started by going into After Effects. Uh, going to our project panel, you can see our project is organized into folders. We have our elements folder, which has a few of our source files and solids. You also have the render comp, which is what we have open right now. And the next folder is the replace images here folder. And this is all of your uh, compositions where you would drag and drop your images, um, either photos or videos. Uh, both work well in this template. The next folder has the composition to replace your logo. The next folder has the compositions to replace your text and each scene has its own quote box and they are different styles, but you can mix and match them uh, if you like by dragging these uh, into each scene that you want to use. The next folder is the scenes folder and this contains all the edited scenes that are in the render comp. As you can see in the timeline, we have scene one, actually scene zero, which is the intro all the way to scene 10, which is the closing logo scene. So let's get started by customizing this template and we can start with our intro scene in the render comp timeline. We can double click on the scene 00, zero intro layer. Just double click on that and that will open up our composition timeline. And all of these scenes have a masters, master controls layer. And this is where you can turn on particles or turn them off. If you check this box, you can turn off the particles. You can turn off the grunge layers. And there's a color adjustment layer that will change the background from light, make it lighter or darker behind the text. So in case you need your text to uh, show up a little bit better over a really, really light background or really dark background, depending on which color you choose for your text, you can uh, check this box to turn that off or on. As you can see, there's that shadow is gone. Uh, you can leave that on. And there's uh, different tint colors uh, for the color correction and you can also change those colors here with the color picker now these colors help the text to pop out so that way you can use pretty much any photo you choose uh, and it'll look good with some text over it there's also the option to uh, turn up or down the brightness of that uh, background behind the text so you can make it really light you can make it really dark just with the slider control so to replace the image for this scene, you can double click on the replace image here intro layer, double click to open that up. As you can see, there's a placeholder layer and you can turn this off or delete it. And now we can import a video or an image to drag into this timeline. So you can go to file, import file, and you can go to wherever your placeholders are, where your images you want to use and click open. And then all you do is just drag that file into your timeline. And there we go. And if we go back to our scene intro, you'll see that the image has been updated. If you want to change the text, you can double click on that. That happened a little quick. You can double click on the replace box quote intro composition. And that's also located in the project panel in the replace text here folder. So if we go here and anytime you see in the timeline, this capital T next to a uh, layer label that means that it is a text layer and you can either double click in the timeline and start typing your text or you can uh, double click inside the comp viewer to start typing and with this text layer selected you can go to the character panel and you can change your font if you wish. Uh, this project uses the Avril Fatface font and that is a free font and the link is in the PDF. You can change that font to whatever you like. You will change the colors in the master controls and each of our quote boxes has a master controls layer. If you select it and go to your effects controls panel, you have different sliders for uh, the box height and width. You can change the name box height and width as well. 
You can change the quote size. You can make it larger or smaller. And then the name text as well. You can change the colors by selecting a color with a color picker. You can move the position of the text for the quote and move the position for the name box up and down is probably the best way. And the last control here has line thickness and you can make this line, the box line, as thick or thin as you like. And if you go back to our scene intro, you'll see that our text is updated and our image. So one thing I wanted to show you really quickly is if you wanted this quote to only be on screen for a shorter period of time. So right now it's coming on at around uh, one second and I don't know, 17 frames. And it starts to animate off screen at around the eight second, eight and a half second mark. If you wanted to make that shorter, maybe go to five seconds, you would select, you would select this layer marker labeled out and drag it over to right around the, the time where you want it to start going away. So let's jump ahead to scene four and customize this scene because this one is a little bit different. The only difference with this one is that in our box quote, we have this line that separates the name from the quote. And, and just to show you quickly, if you go to the master controls layer, uh, you can see that we have a line and marks color. So we have a color control for that line and we also have a line position. So if you needed to move that up or down or off to the side, you have that point control in your effects controls layer that will help you with that. So if we type our text, double click on a text layer, You can go to our master controls, change that position, change the line position, and make that a little more balanced. And if we go back to scene four, you'll see that our text is updated. And if you wanted to add a, a photo to your placeholder, you can double click there, turn off or delete this placeholder. And another way to import files is to just double click in an empty space in the project panel. If you just tap twice in there, uh, you, it'll open the import file dialog box and select your file and click open and then drag it from the project panel into your timeline. And this photo is a little too big. So if I hit S on my keyboard to bring up the scale property, I can scrub to the left on these numbers for our scale and scale that down. You can also move this layer in the comp viewer, position it where you would like it to be. If we go back to scene four, the scene has been updated with our image and our quote. So you would follow that process to customize the entire template. Uh, one last thing we're going to do is go to the closing logo scene and we're going to replace our logo. So you can do that by going to the project panel, go to the replace logo here folder and double click to open up that composition. And we have some placeholder text here. You can type some text if you like, if you don't have a logo, or you can just turn that layer off or delete it. And again, you want to import your file if you haven't already. And so select your file and click open. And again, you can drag it into the timeline or even drag it into your comp viewer. And that one's a little small, so I'm going to delete that and get the other Photoshop file. Click open. We do want it to be footage, so we'll click OK. And again, we'll drag this into either the comp viewer or the timeline. We'll position this where we like it. And then we will go back to our closing scene. Let's open that up. Let's replace our image too. So double click to open the replace image here, 10, composition. Select your file and click open. 
drag this in here. This is a little big. We'll hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale property. Scale that down. And there we go. So if you go back to the replace box quote uh, 10, which is our closing scene box quote with the logo, you can go to the master controls and you can change the line colors and the line thickness. Uh, you can change the logo size. You can make that bigger or smaller and it will still animate on. If you want it to be white instead of whatever color you have currently, you can go back to your replace logo here, composition, select your layer, and then open up the effects and presets panel if you don't already have that open and do a search for the fill effect. Double click to apply that to your layer. Use the color picker to choose white. And if we go back to our closing logo scene, you'll see that it shows up a little better over that background. And you can also play around with these tint colors. So if we go to the color control and choose a different color, we can make this a little more yellow. You could change these up a bit if you want to go for a different look here. And if you don't want any color correction at all, you can select the image composition, the replace image here, layer. If you hit E on your keyboard, or even if your effects controls panel is already open, you can click this FX button here, and that will turn off that effect. So if you want no color control at all, go to your effects controls panel and turn those off if you like. So when you're ready to render, all you do is make sure that you have your render comp timeline selected, go to the composition menu, and select add to render queue. Now, before you go ahead and just click render, uh, you want to make sure that you have the best settings selected and you want to click on lossless in your output module to open up the output module settings. So we have a QuickTime movie format selected, uh, but our format options have animation. If you don't change this, the animation codec renders a very, very, very large file, which you might have problems with playing back. Um, and QuickTime will probably need to do some type of conversion if you try to play it. Uh, so you want to click on format options and quickly change that to H.264 and you can keep it the quality at 100. It still looks good if, even if you move that down to like in the 80s. Still looks fine and the file size will be a lot smaller. If you click OK. So if we click OK and then you want to click on the output to and make sure that you're going to output this to a place where you want to find it. So the correct folder on your hard drive and click save. And one last thing, when you start to render, close that, you click the render button. After Effects is going to give you an estimated render time. For this project, it's going to start giving you a crazy long render time. And see, it says four and a half hours. That's, it's not going to do that. Um, the After Effects estimates the render time based on the frame that it's currently rendering. So what it's doing now is taking into, into account all the effects and giving you an estimated time. Well, once it really starts to go and starts to pick up steam and renders a little bit more, that will go down significantly. I think uh, my render for this was around 30 to 40 minutes. So it's definitely not going to be four hours. So don't freak out if you see that. Uh, just give it a minute and let it run for a little while and then make sure you uh, check that estimated time and make sure that it go does go down because you can see right now it's slowly going down. I hope you enjoy this template. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me, marissa at fluxvfx.com. I'm more than happy to help with any issues that you might have. Thanks for watching.